Tonight, Chattern State College is honored to recognize one of the best-known residents of Western ne Nebraska by presenting Dr. John Harms with an Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters. The Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters recognizes individuals who have made extraordinary contributions to humanity. Dr. Harms is clearly one of those individuals. John is a native Nebraskan, having been born in Bayard. He grew up there and in Morrill. I'm proud to say that John graduated with honors from Shadron State College in 1962. John's future as a leader was never in question. While an undergraduate at Shadron State College, John was president of his class for three years and president of the Student Senate in his senior year. Con Marshall, who was also a student during the time John was at Shadron State, said that John was considered the campus hero. He was distinguished in track and field, and he held the Shadron State College shot put record for some time. John has the impressive distinction of having been voted the beast in a beauty and beast contest at Shadron State. The contest was to raise money for the student loan fund. It was a penny a vote, and students put pennies in big jars with students' names on them. The winning prize was a date with a Frontier Airlines stewardess. <laughs> I don't have the information about who the beauty was that year, but perhaps John remembers. <laughs> After graduating with honors from Shadron State, John taught and coached at Gearing High School for three years. He then returned to Shadron State to earn his master's degree in secondary education in 1966. John began his career in college administration here at Shadron State, serving as director of housing and financial aid from 1966 through 1968. He then spent six years in administrative roles at Northeast Community College in Norfolk, Nebraska. During this time, he began working on his doctorate in higher education administration, and he received that degree from Montana State University in 1975. From 1973 through 1976, John was president of McCook Community College, and he became president of Western Nebraska Community College in 1976. John retired last March after a remarkable 30 years of excellent leadership of Western Nebraska Community College. John is responsible for the close working relationship Shadron State has with WNCC, helping to facilitate student transfer and contain the cost of obtaining a college education in western Nebraska. In your program, you will see that through the years, John has served on many critical state and national boards, commissions, task forces, and organizations aimed at improving the lives, educational opportunities, and economy of the residents of western Nebraska. He's received many awards through the years, such as the Scotts Bluff Star Herald's Citizen of the Year three times. Shadron State's Distinguished Service Award in 1987 and the President's Award from the Nebraska Association of Community College Trustees for outstanding leadership in the development of educational opportunities for the people of Nebraska. The new state-of-the-art Advanced Technology Center that opened last year on the WNCC campus is named in his honor. John will soon be embarking on a new career following his election in November as the senator from the 48th district in the Nebraska legislature. We wish him all the best in this important service to the state of Nebraska. John's wife, Patricia, is also here tonight. Please stand and be recognized, Pat. John and Patricia have three grown children. John, on behalf of Shadron State College, we are proud to count you among our distinguished alumni. We are proud to once again have you on the Shadron State campus 
and we are pleased to be able to pre present you with the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters. John, please step forward to receive your degree. Once again, please join me in congratulating Dr. Harms as the recipient of the Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters from Shadron State College. It's now my pleasure to turn the podium over to Dr. Harms, who will address the class of 2006. Dr. Park, special guests and honor graduates, faculty, parents, and friends. You know, my, uh, a friend of mine once said, you know, John, um, being introduced in flattering terms, um, you need to pray two prayers for forgiveness. One for the person who presented it, and then because you enjoyed it so much. Uh, thank you. Um, next, I want to assure you that uh, Applause is strictly credit. Um, in fact, I remember what a friend once told me. He said, if you get applause during a speech, it's faith. If you get applause during, uh, during the speech, it's hope. If you get it at the end of the speech, it's strictly charity. So we'll see what happens here as we go through this. Um, Dr. Park, may I... Uh, please uh, express my appreciation for this honor. It's uh, truly a humbling experience to come back home. Because you see, this is where I began. This is where I started. Came here as an 18-year-old kid, absolutely scared to death. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know why, whether I belonged here. I didn't know if I was college material or not. Okay, just like probably a lot of you, every time I went into class, my stomach just churned. And I can remember the first exams I'd, I was taking at that time, I was just, just in sweat. And um, to be very frank with you, I, I didn't feel very comfortable. I, I just didn't think I really belonged. I, you know, I graduated from a small school and, I mean, gosh, I'm here because my parents said that's where I have to go. Uh, you need to have a college education. We want you to have a better life than what we've had. And you cannot do it unless you have a college education. And you need to go to a good institution. And they chose Shadron State College for me. And while I was here, I struggled for a while. And there was a man in my life that reached out and touched me. And that was the man by the name of Ross Armstrong. He made all the difference in the world for me. He was a difference maker. He cared about me. He encouraged me. He was my rock. When I got discouraged, I'd go see him. He was like my father. He was a wonderful man. But more important, he cared about me. But as I was going through um, this process of figuring out whether I belonged here or not, I kind of got tired of it about the end of my sophomore year. I said, gosh, you know what? All my friends I see that didn't go to college have cars, they're driving, they're having fun, and every penny I have to save in the summer has to go towards my college education. And my father kept saying, John, it's worth, the, it's worth the price you pay, and we'll help you as much as we can. Then in my sophomore year, I went in to see Mr. Armstrong, uh, who was my advisor at that time. And uh, I said, I'm not coming back. And I want to thank you very much for everything you've done. It's just been a great experience, but I just, I don't feel right here. 
Well, he gave me a little fatherly uh, discussion, and I thought, well, we'll see. And I left with all the intent of never returning. And he reached out, he called my parents, he talked to my father on two occasions in the summer, and believe it or not, he made a home visit to talk to my parents and to talk to me. What Ross Armstrong, what Ross Armstrong saw was something in me that I didn't understand. He saw a talent and he saw a gift somewhere that I didn't know. I didn't know I had it. He called me about two weeks before school started. And he said, I am going to see you here, John Harms. And I said, yeah, you'll see me there. You know, people, I, I shudder to the, fa of the fact what would have happened to me if he would not have reached out and touched me. I don't know what I would have done. I don't know what I would have become. I don't know where I would have gone. Would have I have mounted anything? Probably not. Because you see, the education I got here gave me the foundation of what I needed. And there were great faculty members here, just like there are great faculty members for you. And you were fortunate that you came to this institution because it cares about you. Your faculty care about you. And the thing you need to understand, the only thing they're going to ask from you is we want you to do your best when you leave. Because you see, they gave you their best while you were here. And that is important. You have a responsibility to what you go into your, into your career or whether you go on to advanced degrees to remember. These are the people who gave you your start. They cared about you. They gave you a quality education, just like what I got. They prepared me for the future. Now, my assignment tonight is to give you a 15-minute speech. Your assignment is to listen to me. And um, if you get done before I do, raise your hand. There's a big hook that's pulled. Well, I guess the hook's gone now. Uh, they'll just drag me out of here or I'll take, I'll make uh, corrective actions quickly. But your job is to listen to me for 15 minutes and I'm going to give it to you, okay? Graduates, we're really happy that, uh, and proud of what you've accomplished here. Everyone that's here tonight is, is excited about you and what you've accomplished. You completed a rigorous program here. You leave this institution with knowledge, skills, and perseverance to succeed. You know what it's like to be successful? You've paid the price or you wouldn't be here. You've already proven to everyone that you can be successful. Even though you've learned a lot, guess what? You've got a lot more to learn. I want to encourage you, as you begin to look at your future, to have the strength and the energy to pursue the challenges that are before you. I want you to understand that you've got to have goals, and I want you to reach for those goals, and I want you to put an effort behind it, because you owe it to yourself. You owe it to the institution and the faculty who taught you. Have a dream. Live that dream. And most of all, don't give up. Because you see, I almost gave up until someone that was gracious and kind and warm reached out and touched me and touched my heart and said, no, you're not going to leave. You're not going to quit. We're going to develop you. And I want to quote to you from a very uh, favorite author of mine, and it's from Robert Frost from the road not taken. This quote is really overused a lot, and I don't help that very much because I use it all the time because it's my favorite, and it says a lot what I want to say to you. And I quote, I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, 
and I took the one least traveled by, and that made all of the difference. I want you, as graduates, to take the road that Sleets traveled. That's where you're going to make a difference. That's where you're going to make a difference in the world with people that you're working with and maybe people that you might be serving. And please don't be afraid to be creative and use your vision and your talents that you've been given and be willing, be willing people to take a risk. Be willing not to walk the trail that everybody walks. I will tell you in my entire career, I tried never to walk the path where everybody was at because I realized that that was not where the challenges were going to be. And I would ask you to take the road that's least traveled because that's where you're going to be counted. That's where we're going to see whether you're going to be successful or not. So graduates, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? What road will you take? How will they measure your success? Will they measure your success? How will you measure your success? You know, you may think this is unusual. You may think that this is really not where I want to be, but I'm telling you, if you walk the path that's most traveled, you will not be successful at the end. Some of you are about to go in the workforce. Some of you will go on to other careers. Regardless of what path you take, you are fully prepared because this faculty over here has prepared you. And I, I just urge you to do what Robert Frost has said. I don't care what you, whether it's the, you take the route or the trail or however you want to, 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 to refer to it. But take the one that's least traveled because I know that's where that makes a difference. And you will be a difference maker. The difference you make will, will have an impact, and an impact on your lives as well as others. You're gonna find that a formal education alone is not gonna prepare you for the, your entire work life. That's partly because there are just so many changes that are occurring in this world. And many of you will have two and three different careers as you get to my age. Technology is changing how we work. The characteristics in the world are changing so rapid it's hard for us to keep up with it. So if you think that you're through with education, you're going to be surprised because you're not. You're going to have to continue to go on. And to be honest with you, lifelong learning will be a part of your life forever. And if you do not stay in lifelong learning, if you're not willing to go back to school, if you're not willing to go to the workshops and the seminars, you're not going to be walking the path this least traveled. You'll be with all the rest of the people. And that's where you're going to make your difference because you're going to have to continue to grow. You'll discover if you're going to keep abreast with the developments that affect your work and your career, you're going to have to continue to stay focused in your life. And those who keep current with such developments will progress with income and responsibility. With added responsibility will come higher expectations that you'll be able to anticipate and you'll be able to prepare for change. Change is one of the most frightening things for people. And you have to be prepared to understand that your life's gonna change yearly. And you need to be prepared for that. Some of you will produce changes that will, have a, will affect the lives and, and the people that you work. Some of you will actually save lives because of the research that you do, because of the medicine and whatever it might be that you're doing. If you think you've left test, testing behind, folks, you need to realize very quickly that that's not over. You're going to be test, there's going to be tests of knowledge, there's going to be tests of, of, of skills and tests of character, a test of leadership. And scoring well on these tests will determine how successful you're going to be in the future. The test of character, the test of character is a person's greatest challenge. Those who demonstrate trustworthy character will receive greater opportunities 
for advancement at higher levels of responsibility and respect. Those who are trusted, those who are trusted, will in most cases have a greater impact on determining the future of this country, the future of this world. So where will you be, graduates? What is your challenge? What are you wanting to change? Winston Churchill said, and I quote, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. So graduates, what are you going to give? What role are you going to play? Will you be a difference maker? How many of you are another Ross Armstrong? How many of you are going to reach out and help people and touch their lives and their hearts? Because when they pull out the, the tape to measure you, when you're at the end <clears throat> of your career, what do you want them to say about you? I wish I could answer every one of those questions for you, because I can't. Only time will tell, <clears throat> and only history will show whether you've made a difference. That you played a, an important role in changing people's lives, we will follow you with a great deal of interest as graduates of this institution. And you know our expectations of you are extremely high. We trust that you will succeed in whatever you choose to do. I know you'll be successful because I know this faculty has prepared you just as they prepared me. The only question I have is, what path will you, will you walk? What route will you take? Margaret Mead probably said it best when she said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. So will you change the world? Will you make a difference? Will you walk a path that's least traveled? Those questions and those answers are up to you. And I thank you, and I humbly say I'm so thoughtful, thankful that I had the opportunity to come back home. Thank you.